Uh, and uh, it turns out, uh, not only I'm an old erstwhile hobbyist like yourselves, but a fellow sufferer like some people here, uh, Spencer, Wayne, what have you, that have been in the trade, in the industry, uh, a very, very long time. And in that process, uh, I did help put up a bunch of collecting stations around the world, mainly for quality marine uh, under Phil Shane's Aegis in uh, LA and TMC, Tropic Marine Center in uh, England. And I should say, if you like this picture bunch, you can see it again on the uh, web web media, uh, and you're certainly welcome to write me. Uh, half the time I'm in San Diego, and always near the darn internet. So what to tell you about marine livestock sources? It's a, a shame, but most all of them are still wild collected. There's still, uh, there are some that are captive produced, but by and large, uh, they're uh, brought out of the wild. And uh, to tell you some of the good news, and I do encourage you, though I did not see much evi evidence of it, uh, uh, though Myron was nice enough to drive me around today and visit uh, some of the local livestock fish stores, uh, that uh, people here don't seem to produce uh, local, uh, much in the way of uh, captive marines. I know Wayne used to some years ago, uh, but uh, I strongly encourage people if they have, you guys have basements, unfortunately in Southern California the ground shakes so much, uh, we don't have basements, otherwise you end up underneath the house. Uh, but uh, if you have an interest and uh, any sort of uh, a desire to uh, you know, feed your habit, uh, as we say, uh, I do encourage you to consider uh, at-home breeding of your fishes, please. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> we're, so, we're trying. We're trying. So, so to tell you, uh, especially if you can buy locally, the local organisms are uh, not only uh, adapted to local conditions of water, what have you, but they've undergone a lot less stress to be moved around uh, and be presented to you. Uh, but some of the benefits, of course they live better, they adapt better to captive conditions. Uh, hopefully, uh, they're relatively disease-free, parasitic and infectious disease-free. Uh, if you're concerned about such things, there is a question of morality. Hey, Ronnie. So, uh, and then what? Uh, why not? You can come out to these pitches or write your results up on the internet, the bulletin board, one way or the other, and uh, actually make a, a dent in our ignorance as a species. Unfortunately, there are some uh, negative uh, aspects to buying cattle produced organisms. Uh, generally, they're smaller in size than wild collected ones. Uh, generally, they cost more. So some places, for instance, Singapore, even though it's a very, I think, the most civilized place in the world, they have wide uh, uh, broadband, very fast, for free, throughout the whole country. It's a small country. Unfortunately, they're ignorant and they still buy wild collected clownfishes because they're cheap. Do they live? No. Uh, okay. Uh, what also, in the bad old days, a lot of the uh, captive produced organisms, they weren't very colorful. And they lacked uh, vibrancy. Uh, all the way around. And also, uh, to some people, I just came back from a trade show in the industry last uh, week. We did make a run up from Nuremberg to Amberg. There's a hobbyist group like this. They have a, sh a show every year that just kind of coincides with the May interview show every other year. One half of the room, they have all captive produced stuff. And the other side is whatever. But the captive produced stuff, every year I go, there's more things that I never saw before. But unfortunately, compared to the wild, there's a lot more in the wild still. Some of my favorite examples. Uh, oh, what's that pointer? Meow, meow, meow. I can go here. The, the uh, uh, gobia soma, the, the little cleaner gobies. These used, some of these are still oceanops is still collected in the wild. Uh, but as time goes by, many more of them are captive produced. There's even one that's from the Pacific coast on the tropical side. Uh, that is produced more and more in captivity. Of course, clownfishes, uh, of all the species that are sold, uh, most all of the ones that are super popular uh, are captive produced. There's a bunch of other groups that are, uh, are some fishes called roundheads that include like the genus Assessor. They're very, very colorful, very hardy. Uh, the comet, the sea comet, is also a roundhead. It has been produced in captivity. But once again, it's still mostly wild collected. The pseudochromids or dotty backs, they're very popular. In particular, this one, the Friedman eye, uh, has been produced in captivity for a long time. It's much less mean than the ones collected from the wild. And even, I would say this, 
uh, much less likely to jump out of your system. And, whoa, don't get all bummed out. Uh, it's not just fishes, uh, but non-fishes, uh, algae. I saw this racemosa here in BC. Uh, of course, giant clams this is a very happy story to tell. Uh, still kind of unhappy in some places. I did see some clams today at one shop uh, that were uh, wild collected that were from Vietnam. And I will tell you this, I'm a content provider, that's what I tell the tax man, to this uh, interest and also to dive travel adventure. And so I'm in the uh, wild pretty often myself, diving, trying to take pictures. And it really bumps me out when <laughs> you're swimming above the reef and you look down and there's like a hole cut out of the reef, you know, where the people just taking the clam out. The wild clams don't live very well compared to the captive produced ones. Uh, uh, stony corals are produced in large numbers. And even the Debelia shrimp, the scarlet shrimp, those are also captive produced by TMC. Okay, and now I have a demo that the, the customs people were asking so much about. I'm going to get it out. I'm not going to pull all the way out though because then I'll run out of time. Most all marine fishes are collected with this tool. It's called a mist net or a fence net or a barrier net. And this one, like me, is old and moldy. Like when it's new, it's made out of nylon. Uh, it's very hard to see and when it's underwater, it's invisible. But this one has uh, been out in the sun too long, and so got all whited out. This one also I want to point out, this is the lead line side of it, and this is the float line side of it. It's very tall. This is a net that uh, we use in places like Hawaii. On volcanic islands, they have a real steep slope. Uh, usually, like if you're collecting like uh, rasses, that sort of thing, oh, you can pass that around too long, give you the visual and the tactile. Uh, if you're collecting things like grasses, the net only needs to be like half a meter tall because the fish will not leave the bottom. What, go, what happens when they go up off the bottom? Something comes and eats them. <laughs> so going to the surface, like when you have pet fish and feeding your animals flakes or pellets that float, that's a very unnatural behavior by and large. But, uh, so you don't have to have a tall net, but in Hawaii, because it's so steep, you have to have a net because when you're deploying the lead line down on the bottom, maybe the float line will be pulled down. Okay. And I have to tell you, I usually do this at demo. I go, you guys are all yellow tangs. You know, and you over here, you're black virgin triggers, what have you. But in the interest of saving a little time, I'll just try to describe how the whole process works. For one to tell you, most all the uh, fishes that we keep are quite territorial. They live in a certain area. They really can't leave. They can't go try to find some other place on another reef. Why? It's already occupied. Somebody else is already living there. So what you do as a fisher is you look over the side of the boat, you're swimming along, and you're like, whoa, there's a bird-nosed wrasse or some chevron tangs, chevys, you know, which sell for big money. So you go, let's fish there. And generally, like good divers, you're fishing with a buddy. It's more fun, too. So what do you do? You go down below, and you chase the fish away. You actually push them off their territory. And what do we use? We use what are called chaser poles. These are a lot like fishing rod without the eyelets. So if you can just imagine things like uh, uh, fiberglass sticks that you're tapping on the bottom. Fish don't like tapping on the bottom. So they kind of run away. Then you take this net and you deploy it. If you have only one person, maybe you make it just into a, a U shape on the bottom. If you have two people, maybe you make a W. So now you have two pockets. You pull part of the net back, either setting uh, it back uh, like a cup with a rock or a piece of surgical tubing that you have with a clip like wrapped around.